they have not received the blessing. I have seen men who have worked hard every time it is about to be that knockout point, things don't work for them. Every time they are very close to the so-called open door, it doesn't work. And one of the things that I have found out in the life of such people is this. When there's pride, when there's ungratefulness, when there's a lack of thanks even, certain doors in your life will stay closed and unopened. And so we can stop the sermon here this morning and just make a conclusion that a person who does not live a life of thankfulness it in, indeed is the one who has chosen to close the door to an open heaven. We are not what we are because we are strong, because we are smart, because we have money. We are what we are because God is God. Because God is good. Because God is kind. Because God is faithful. Because God is merciful. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, I'm a scientist. I'll tell you, the, the virus is so small that there is no microscope that can see it. And we have to somehow use some sort of radiation or ultraviolet system to sort of create some semblance of resonance and say that is how it looks like isn't it ironic that the whole wild world was shut down by a single virus isn't that something and if god made that virus that tiny and it has such ability to shut down scientists shut down america shut down britain shut down everywhere who is man, therefore, not to be grateful to God? Who is man? Let me say, who is man that thou art mindful of him? Who is man? Your pastor said something this morning that so many people have died. It's so ironic when you go into the body of a human being, ask all the medical doctors, apart from all the microbiological activities going on, the physiological activities going on in the body, they cannot find it where the pulse of life is. They can't find it. They try. We do everything we know according to science, but none has been able to find the pulse of life. That life itself. And it is ironic that God intentionally put it inside of man. And David Solomon said, it's like a bread. It's there for a moment. And it can disappear. The reason I'm giving you this prelude is that it is so essential that you are able today to evaluate, to acknowledge, and to remember why you are here and why you have become what you are. In Romans chapter 1, verses 18 to 21, I'd like you to hear this. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth of in, un, in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it to them. For the invisible things of God from creation of the world are clearly seen been understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were they thankful, but they became vain in their minds and imagination, and their foolish heart became darkened. You can see from this very verse, this, that Thankfulness, gratefulness is the will of God. If anybody is here asking for what the will of God is, I say that one of the things that is important is thankfulness, is acknowledgement, is understanding that something 
is responsible for what you are and that something is beyond you and when you organize and you recognize that that thing is God then you thank him and be grateful for him it is the will of God that we are thankful it is so important because what has happened in our generation is that people think that they are self-made in the United States we now have what is called the council culture. And I'm beginning to see the syndrome in Africa. You raise a child, you pay $150,000 per year for school fees, you're paying $100,000 here, you're complaining. You pay $150,000 for four years, he's done, then you send him to medical school, half a million dollars. Then he graduates, he buys himself a sports car, he buys himself nice guns, he starts to travel around the world, and then he comes back home and says, Dad, you know you're not really planning your life very well. Because I am just wondering by the time you are 70, what you are going to be doing because you are traveling, do you even have enough savings? It is council culture. And then the dad will look at that child and say, well, I spent one million dollars raising you. If I didn't, you will not be able to tell me what I'm telling you. You're telling me now. It is a demonic oppression. It is a curse on an individual who does not understand how he became what he became or give glory to those who gave them. And some of you here, one of the reasons you may be on that severe roadblock may be that you have defied the simple goodness in your life by not being grateful to your parents, by not being thankful, by not acknowledging the people that God has put in your life. And if you cannot appreciate simple human being, you probably have not appreciated what God has done in your life. Hear what Paul says here. In verse 24, he says, Because that when these people knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts became darkened. Are there chemistry students here? Probably. Medical students? Probably. Maybe even physics. You know that in any enzyme reaction, sometimes for an enzymatic reaction to go uphill, you probably need a catalyst. You agree? Amen. So you are with me. Now let me tell you why this is important. God is the catalyst of everything in our lives. And when that catalyst is missing, there will be no positive reaction in our life. Unfortunately, when we eliminate God in our life, the tendency is that the reaction will go backwards. Paul says in him we live, in him we move. In him we have our being. He keeps everything together by the power of his hands. And that's what the Apostle Paul is saying here. Just hear this. He says, because they knew him, they did not glorify him as God, neither were they thankful, but they became vain in their imagination, and their foolish hearts became darkened. They glorified him not as God. The implication to this phrase is that when there is no gratefulness, my friend, not only are you not glorifying God, and this is what is very scary, hear me, you are taken away from the glory of God. It is a very scary place to be. Except you don't understand who God is. Moses told the Israelites, he said, I tremble. I tremble because God is a consuming fire. Although he's a father, although he's a creator, although he's a lover, but when you mess with him, he still can consume you. He's a God that causes the sea to rage and the mountains to melt. Yet he's your father. And when you cross certain line, and one of the dangerous lines that saints may cross is to take God's glory for themselves. And once you do that, you have started the battle. 
The Apostle Paul understood this and he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7, he says, For who make a deed to differ from another? Another pastor said, Who makes you think you are superior? And what hast thou that thou did not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why do you glory as thou as though you have not received it. Not only is this individual not grateful, but his pride is glorifying himself and making him equal to God. I'd like you to hear this, my dear friends, this afternoon. If you have a tendency of ungratefulness in your life, especially to the people God has put in your life, and ultimately against God, I want you to be careful because you are contending against God. Do you know what this means? It means you have already lost before the battle started. I mean, who's going to fight God? Who is going to fight God? You have lost the battle before it even started. I have news for the ungrateful person. God will not share his glory with anybody. In Isaiah chapter 42 verse 8, hear what it says. He says, I, the Lord, I have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand and I will keep you and I will make you to be a covenant to the people and a light for the Gentiles. To open eyes that are built and to free captives from prison and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I, the Lord, and that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. And that is God. In verse 9 it says, See the former things which have taken place and new things that I declare. Because before they sprung into being, I announced them. Let me give you three quick summary here. Number one, when we live a life of ungratefulness, when we live a life of unthankfulness before God, we make God a liar. I want you to hear that. You make God a liar when your life does not have thankfulness. I have seen great families destroyed because at the point when they had a great marriage, they had a great wife, they took it for granted they couldn't appreciate the simple food that was made, the simple house that was cleaned, the way the children were raised. They could not understand it until they lost it. When there's ungratefulness in your life, you make God a liar. You frustrate the purpose that he is designing for you. Number two, you take away from his glory. And God will never share his glory with you. And when you do this, you are denying the power of God in your life. You know what happens? God is our helper. Our very present help in times of trouble. Many people have died unnecessary deaths. Many people have been kept in the dungeon of this life. Many people have been bound by the chains that should never bind them. And the reason is this. They have pushed their helper away. When you push your helper away, you will not hear when God is warning you. When your enemies plan to set a trap for you, when kidnappers plan to catch you, you will not hear that help to say, today, don't take Iroepe Road. When demons are about to destroy your marriage, when demons are about to cut short God's destiny for you, because you have lived a perpetual life of ungratefulness, you will not hear the Holy Spirit say, son, stop. Daughter, stop. Lift up your head and see what is coming. And this is what happens when there is ungratefulness in our lives. We end up pushing the hand of our helper away. Let me give you a few bad things that the, this thing does to us. Number one, 
Ungratefulness opens the door to confusion. Can you repeat it? Do you know what confusion means? It is made from two Latin words. Common means together, fusion means to fuse. To add together things that shouldn't be. The man of God is called to have a sound mind. And that's what the scripture says. He said, the spirit that we have received is not the spirit of temerity, but of love, of power, and sound mind, uh, so that we can make proper judgment uh, of everything and not be judged by anything. But the problem is this. Uh, when there is ungratefulness in the life of a saint, uh, confusion comes in. Because why? God takes his hands off. Ungrateful people, they are not only prideful. The fact that they begin to take away the glory of God uh, is not enough. But I tell you what it does. It makes them grumblers. Can you repeat that word? Grumblers. It makes them complainers. Can you say it? Complainers. It makes them blasphemers. Blasphemers. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you know what happened to the Israelites? In Exodus chapter 16, verse 1 to 3, God took them out of slavery. But from the moment they faced the Red Sea, rather than be like Miriam and lift up their hands and praise her, that they have come out of the house of hostage, they grumbled. Oh, we want onion ring. Oh, we want Egypt. Oh, we want water. Oh, we want chicken. Oh, we want suya. All the things that they did not have is what was so big in their eyes. And you know what is so sad? When it was the exact moment in God's timing for them to enter into their destiny, confusion made them reject it. And I believe this morning that somebody is hearing the sound of my voice. The Spirit of God is speaking to somebody. That somebody is being called into the place of repentance. And somebody is being called to reject grumbling and complaining and blaspheming in their life. And I am telling you this because right around the corner, your destiny is there. You know what happened at the end of the day? God swore. And he said to them, all their carcasses will drop in the wilderness. They will not enter. Number two, when there is ungratefulness, it forces the hand of God to turn against us. Perhaps one of the saddest consequences of ungratefulness is that if not repented of, it eventually forces the hand of God to turn and destinies can change. For so many people, the destiny have changed for the people of Israel. And hear God, in Numbers chapter 14, verse 20 to 24, the Lord replied, I have forgiven them. As you asked, this is Moses and God, nevertheless, surely as I live, and as I surely as the glory of the Lord fills the whole earth, not one of those who saw my glory and the signs I performed in Egypt, in wilderness, but who have disobeyed me and tested me ten times. Not one of them will see the land that I promised to them on oath to their ancestors. My dear friend, this morning, our hearts should tremble. Our hearts should tremble when we complain. Our hearts should tremble when we forget that there's more that God has done for us than the things we have not received. You know what is very scary, my dear friends, is this. When we get into that place of ungratefulness, we forgot or forget all the good things that we have had up to that time. Yeah. Yeah. You don't love me again. Well, when you are unfaithful, she was faithful to you. Why don't you measure it from there? Oh, Dad, you hate me. When you are in year four, Dad has spent what he doesn't have to bring you to where you are. Can you?
you measure gratefulness based upon what you have and not upon what you don't have? That is the problem of it. Oftentimes, the devil causes us to measure our reality based upon what we don't have and we defy all the goodness that we have received that we drive in for that moment. And what this does is this. It forces God's hand to turn against us. Number three, ungratefulness breeds contempt. It makes us defy the almightiness of God. Because when ungratefulness comes alive, it starts by binding us to the reality that we have experienced. We forget that we have experienced blessings, protection, and provision. Hear this. In Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22, it says, Because of the loving devotion of the Lord, we are not consumed, for His mercies never fail. How about not looking at the injury? Yesterday, something happened. When that, two days ago, when that blade slashed my hand, I didn't even feel pain because it was so fast. It probably severed so many things that you don't feel the, the pain. It numbs itself. But what was so interesting was this. I finally just said, Lord, thank you. It could have been my face, it could have been my clavicle, it could have been the vein going to my brain. It could have been. And then the world will say, the world got him. The world didn't get me. If there was some gratefulness in my heart, I would not hear from my helper. My very present help was there. The Spirit of God was there to help me. He told me, don't look up. Instinctively, I lifted up my hand. I want you to know that you are not destroyed or perished because your helper is on your side. And make sure that with your behavior, you do not chase him away. My dear friends, it is important this morning that you learn how to apprehend blessing. A grateful heart is what? A joyful heart. Please say it with me. A grateful heart. Let me show you a secret. In Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3 to 5, he says this, Therefore with joy ye draw water of the wells of salvation. And in that day ye shall say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doing among the people, make mention that his name is exalted, Sing unto the Lord, for he has done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Before I explain it, no, we have that song. He has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Great things. He has sing with me. He has done. If you believe me, demonstrate it. Hallelujah. He has done great things. Hallelujah. He has done great things. Hallelujah. Let me show you the secret. When there's joy in your heart, there's power. When there's joy in your heart, the perspective is clear. When there's joy in your heart, you will float above the storm. Look at it. The reason a lot of people don't apprehend their blessing is that depression is the direct opposite of dynamics. Did you know that? Dynamics, physics. When a material explodes, what happens? Does pressure decrease or grow? It grows. If you don't know your physics or chemistry, you're in trouble. When there's explosion, there is pressure.
pressure and the Holy Spirit is called dynamics. It's called dynamics. And that represents the joy of the Spirit. And when the Spirit is walking, your eyes are clear. Your perspective is clear. You are able to apprehend. The opposite of that is depression. Lack of joy. Sadness. Bitterness. Ungratefulness. Hatred. And when that starts to operate, my pastor is, re is responsible. That's why I don't go to church again. It is my father's fault uh, that I didn't become a doctor. And it is my neighbor's fault uh, that my child didn't do well. That is all that you will see in your life. Hear this. You will not be able to draw from the well of salvation. Time will pass. Blessings will pass. And people will be wondering why you have remained in the same position in your spiritual world, in your emotional world, in your physical world, it's because you have lived all your life joyless. An ungrateful person is a joyless person. And you will tell yourself, I reject a joyless life in Jesus' name. Amen. It is very important. You know, there was a time I went to Europe not too long ago, three months, and somebody came, I couldn't recognize them, and said, Sir, do you know me? I said, I can't remember, please. You know that person that had that disease? I said, Yes, there are so many people that had the disease, but I am the one that you prayed for. And he hugged me. Thank you, sir. But you know what happened? The moment he hugged me, I felt the Spirit of God moving me and laid hands on him again. I added blessing upon blessing. When a person is grateful, it will draw more blessing. Let me give you a few secrets as we round up. Number one, how do we become grateful? The first thing is remembering. Can you repeat it? Remembering. The first thing in gratefulness is to remember. Remember where you are. Remember the journey. Remember the troubles. But more than that, remember when salvation appeared in your life. Hallelujah. Because I stand in your presence. Can you ever believe that I was crippled? I had polio. I lost my movement from my waist to the bottom. It wasn't only me. There was a good friend of mine, Stephen. We both had polio. Stephen never made it. And this is Dr. Omo Ichuafo. Not only doctor, PhD, scientist, and mentor. I have a family. I have an old behind me. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Everywhere I go, I am an influencer. I am a change maker. I am a hands of God. Hallelujah. Can you remember? Can you remember? I remember that a lot of people in my family lineage. You know, marriage is tough for them, especially for adult people. We don't treat women well. We don't treat women well. But I remember how uncles have failed, how grandpas have failed, how fathers have failed. But I remember that God said that my destiny would not be like that. I remember that God changed me and gave me the very woman of my heart who gladdens my heart. I remember that when I am tempted, oh, I cannot do that to this one that gladdens my heart. And that is the first place to start. Remember. Oftentimes, Christians have spiritual amnesia. You forgot how it was for you. You forgot how people tolerated you. You forgot how God did not disgrace you. You forgot how God spared your life up. You forget how everything God did for you. Like Israel. And God told Israel, he said, look at it. 
When I took you through the Red Sea, did you see your footprints on the ground? They said, no. Well, the reason you don't see it is because I was carrying you in my heart. And a lot of you, the reason you don't see your footprints is because God is carrying you yes, in his hands. Hallelujah. Amen. Our Redeemer lives. Amen. Amen. Our Redeemer lives. Amen. Amen. Your Redeemer lives. Amen. Barin is the first thing in gratefulness. Number two, the second thing is to give a spiritual sacrifice of praise. It is not enough to remember. The second important part is to live a life of gratefulness. Hear how God talks about it. In Deuteronomy 6, he says, When your son asks you in time to come, say, What do these testimonies and statutes and judgments mean which the Lord our God commanded you? Then you shall say, We were slaves. I was a slave. Let me tell you one, one quick testimony before I talk about praise. I was in this aura in the early 1984. Mr. Do, my husband, my blood, friends. We have problems with women, we have problems with alcohol, we have problems with smoke. We were very angry and violent young graduates. If you mess with us, we'll beat you to almost death. We were very, very violent young men. And then one day, I met Jesus. But before I met Jesus, something started to happen in my life. Somebody said, Tony, you are dying. I said, why? He said, don't you see yourself? This smoke you are taking is killing you. I could not stop. I ate sweets. I almost died of diarrhea. Sweets could not stop it. I went to Celestial Church. They gave me all sorts of holy water and water to drink. I couldn't stop smoking. One way, somewhere in Essen here, one of my girlfriends, the father is from Ozala, took me there. You guys know you didn't do that. I entered the house with my back. A strong girl washed a big man like me from head to toe. They cut me with blades and put charcoal or whatever in my body so that I wouldn't smoke again. I got home, I didn't smoke for one day. I didn't smoke for one week. By the second week, I said, this is madness. All the smoke, I didn't smoke for two weeks. I smoked it in one day. I smoked it in the bathroom. I smoked it on my bed. What is this nonsense? Then the girl said, ah, it's because I, I made mistake. Took me to another one. Then the man gave me a pot. Only because I don't want to smoke because I don't want to die. 